Welcome back to Coding with Flutter. In this video, I'm going to show you all the tools that I use as part of my development workflow when making mobile apps. And in 2019, we have some amazing tools that make it increasingly possible to design, develop and distribute mobile apps for multiple platforms. And we can do that faster than ever before. So whether you're a single developer and you want to build a mobile app all by yourself, or you work in a team with other designers, I will show you some tools that can dramatically increase your productivity and help you build better products faster. So let's start with you and your app idea. How can you turn this into a mobile app that is distributed to users in the app stores? And the first step is to design your app. And to do that, you need a tool that helps you craft good looking UIs with ease. And personally, I've been using Sketch for the last few years and I'm very happy with it. But of course, there are also other tools like Figma or Adobe XD. And while I've not used them personally, and I can't speak for them, they are becoming very popular design tools. So on this video, I'll focus on Sketch, but just know that there are other popular alternatives. So over here, I'm designing an app for the next billion dollar idea, which is an Instagram for cats. And because I'm just getting started, here I have only one screen, which is the first page that users will see in my app. And as you can see, I have a title and an image and a bottom panel with a shadow and then a CTA button so that users can get started. So how can we turn this into a real Flutter app that will run on iOS and Android? Well, if we wanted, we could start a brand new Flutter project and build all these separate components as widgets. However, at this stage, I'd like to introduce a new tool that I've been using recently. And this tool is called Supernova. And Supernova is all about transforming existing designs into code. So let's try this out. And what I want to do is to import my existing sketch design. And then I get to choose which screens I want to import. So in this case, I can select the only screen that I have and I can press import. And then I get a warning about missing fonts, but I can ignore this. And as we can see, Supernova now shows a preview on my screen. And on this panel, I can see the generated Flutter code. And one cool thing about it is that I can select individual items on this page and the corresponding code is automatically highlighted on this panel. So at this stage, I could already export this into a Flutter project. But before that, I want to give you a preview of one of the features of Supernova. So if I select this button, I can see that this is treated as a standard view. And this is not what I want, because in the real app, this will be a button that the user can tap on to perform some action. So what I can do is to convert this into a button component. And as you can see, this is now treated as a button. And also the corresponding code now shows a flat button, which has an on CTA pressed callback. And this is really powerful because the designs that we export from Sketch have no notion of whether something like this is a button. But with Supernova, we can add this information so that this will really become a button when we export our design into code. Okay, so next we can export this project. And here we can see options to generate iOS, Android, React Native or Flutter projects. So I can go ahead and create a Flutter project. I can ignore this message about the fonts. And again, here I get to choose which screens to export. And once this is done, we have a Flutter project that we can open with Visual Studio Code. So once we open the project, we can update the Flutter packages. And when this is done, all the errors in the source code will be fixed. And then we can run the app on the simulator like this. And by the way, you can see that the generated project has some specific folders that were created by Supernova. And also I can see that the image that I was using in my design has been exported to the assets folder. And if I open the passpec.yaml file and scroll down, I can see that this folder has also been included. Okay, so I can quickly pause the video and resume when the application is running. Our application is now running and it shows the image that was loaded from the assets folder in the project. And this widget is a natural material button that looks and behaves as expected. And I can see all the code for my page on this file. So here I have my button callback where I could add some navigation code. And if I scroll down, I can find all the code for my button, for example. 
And at this stage, I'd like to point out that while Supernova generated this code, it has placed everything into a big build method. And most likely, you still want to do some refactor so that you can break all this code into multiple widget classes that are easier to reason about. And also, text styles and colors are best moved into a separate files that defines all the themes. So when it comes to code generation, Supernova is not a silver bullet. And also, I can open the original sketch file so that I can see the app side by side with the original design. And I can see that there are some inconsistencies in the thickness of this text inside the button, as well as the shadows. And all of this is to say that Supernova is not perfect, but it is a young tool that has a lot of potential, and in fact it's already powerful enough to handle navigation, animations, and much more. So I may do a more in-depth tutorial about Supernova and talk more in detail about how it can fit in the design and development process. So the bottom line here is that you can take the best of what Supernova has to offer so that you can more quickly translate designs into code, but as a developer you are still the guardian of your own code and you want to ensure that it's clean and reusable. In any case, I want to say that translating accurate designs into code can be very time consuming and I feel that Supernova has a lot of potential in this space. Okay, so let's get back to our original goal which was to build our billion dollar app. And once our designs are done, we want to develop our application. And as we have seen, I'm using Flutter to do this because it allows me to write code once and run it on multiple platforms. And of course, Flutter has hot reload and great documentation, which makes me very productive. And to build Flutter apps, I'm using Visual Studio Code as my favorite IDE because it is fast and lightweight and also has some great extensions that can make you more productive. And just to name a few, I use Awesome Flutter Snippets and Break It Per Colorizer 2 and also Error Lens and Pub Spec Assist and also To Do 3. And these extensions are all great for increasing your development speed. Okay, so once we have created a Flutter project, we can always run a git init to create a new repository. And then we can use the source control tab in Visual Studio Code to commit all our changes. So here I could type in a commit message such as uh, initial commit and that way I can commit my changes. And while this works, over the years I have been using an alternative git client called git app. And my favorite thing about this client is that I can very easily see the history of any git project with a tree-like structure like this. And it is also very easy to amend existing commits, branches and tags and to perform many other tasks that are harder to do on the command line. So if you're running on macOS, I highly encourage you to check this out. And speaking of version control, once you're happy with your local changes, you want to push them into a remote repository. And nowadays, the most common services are GitHub, GitLab and Bitbucket. And for what it's worth, I find that GitHub has the best features and UI and it's free if you use it for public open source projects. However, GitHub is more expensive for teams that need private repositories and many companies choose to use GitLab or Bitbucket instead. Next, I want to talk about Firebase because a lot of applications require authentication and a remote database and analytics and Firebase provides all these services and much more and Firebase works really well with Flutter. In fact, I have used it extensively for client projects in the last couple of years and it has really helped to reduce the time to market for my projects. So feel free to check it out. And by the way, I have made an entire course showing how to use Flutter and Firebase to build a complete app. So if you are new to Flutter and Firebase or you want to take your skills to the next level, this course will keep you busy. Okay, so we have now seen how to go from design to development and if we want, we can even use Firebase as a backend. And as we develop our apps, it's a good idea to get them into the hands of testers and users. And since we are in 2019, no one should really be building releases by hand. Instead, we can use a continuous integration system like CodeMagic to automate our builds. And CodeMagic was built entirely for Flutter, so let's see how it works. Over here I have signed in into my CodeMagic account and I can see a list of all my projects and I'm going to use one of them as an example. So if I want I can open the settings for this project and here I can see a workflow which is made of various steps. And I could set a build trigger to decide when a build should be triggered 
and on which branches. Or I could tell CodeMagic to run the automated tests for my Flutter app. And if I go to the Build tab, I can choose which Flutter channel I want to use, as well as the target platforms such as iOS and Android in this case, and whether I want a debug, release or profile build. And then I can choose the Xcode version to use for the iOS build. And also I can supply some arguments for the Flutter build command. And I could use this to set a flavor for my Flutter app. And this is useful if I want to make different builds for development, staging or production. And finally, there is a publish stage, where I can specify the Android and iOS code signing options. And I can also choose which channels I want to deploy to, such as email, Slack, or even Google Play and App Store Connect. And after I've configured code signing, then CodeMagic is able to deploy to the app stores for distribution. And with all these different channels, we have a lot of choice about how we distribute apps to our testers and users. Okay, so I can get back to my Flutter project and as you would expect, I can check the status of each build as well as viewing the log for each stage in the build process. And this is very useful because when builds fail, we can figure out the reason. So all in all, setting up a basic workflow for a new Flutter project takes about 5 minutes or maybe a little longer when you need to configure code signing. And if you want, you can even configure multiple workflows to suit the needs of your team. So if you need a CI system for your Flutter apps, make sure to check out CodeMagic. In conclusion, we have seen how to go from design all the way to delivering our Flutter apps to users. And along the way, we have explored some very powerful tools that make our life easier. So if you want to translate your designs directly into code, you can fit tools like Supernova in your workflow. Or if you want to add a backend to your app, then Firebase offers a range of useful services. And all your code can be stored safely into version control so that multiple developers can work in parallel. And thanks to services like GitHub, it's easy to collaborate, make pull requests and perform code reviews. And when you're ready to push the build button, CodeMagic can help you with customizable workflows and various deployment options so that all your builds are taken care of. And of course, by using Flutter, you can write your code once and run on multiple platforms. And by also using all these tools, you and your team can do a lot more with less. And I might cover some of these tools more in detail in the future. And as usual, you can sign up at codingwithflutter.com for more updates. And feel free to also check my Flutter and Firebase course, which is available with a discounted code by using the link in the description below this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.